Hey people, I am back today with a video that a lot of people have been requesting that I make and I finally got around to making it, which is you have my settings. You know how to make thin light supports, thinner medium supports, the heavy supports. You know how to place them in general if you've watched my videos or if you've played around you know, just with the program yourself. But the question everyone's been asking me is how do I know where to place a heavy versus a medium versus a light support to get the best results? So we all know if you, if you have pre-supported files from Patreons and if your settings aren't perfectly dialed in or even if they are dialed in, sometimes you go to print a figure that's posed like this and the support under here they use may not be heavy enough. And what do you get? You get a flat pancake arm that's like two layers thick, looks terrible, you have to reprint. And that's because the person doing the support there didn't know the thickness they should use. So we're going to look at all over a model how to figure out how to judge what type of support you should be using. It doesn't help to know you have light, medium, and heavy if you don't know exactly where to use them, right? It's all going to boil down to, and I'm going to make this quick because in Chitterbox, uh, that part's going to take about 15 minutes. And I know people don't like long videos. You learn what you want to learn out of it. So short version is the analysis you need to do is how much material is the support going to be holding up? How much stress is going to be on it? And the easy way to think about it is if you have a model posed like this, look at this arm. It doesn't join the rest of the model till here. So I look at it from here to here is its own model. If I had to support just the arm, how would I do it so it wouldn't fail? I support it like that, then when it joins the model, it joins the model. So every part of a model, even if it's a finger, I look at it, how would I support the finger, it joins here. How would I support this finger from here to here to make it not fail? Right? So if you look at things that way, that'll help you. I'm gonna, I don't want to waste time talking about it too much. We're going to jump right into Chitterbox. You'll see exactly how I do it. I think if you stay with me to the end of that, you will have a really clear understanding of what I mean by looking at as each thing kind of as a separate model. Look at how much weight it's supporting. Look how much stress, how many times it's getting pulled as the plate separates from the FEP. Right? The, the supports that, the, you know, that are attaching the model to the base effectively get pulled, pulled on every single time the plate goes up. So let's jump right into Chitterbox, check that out. I am hoping that after you watch this video, uh, it will take your support level to the next game in terms of understanding where to use everything. Hopefully it'll result in less failures for you, better prints, better results, more happiness. Because hey, when a print comes off that plate and it looks perfect, it's like Christmas, right? I'm, I, I still, no matter how much I print, every print that comes off, um, man, that's exciting, like it's beautiful. So I wanna get you there where every print comes off like that. This will also allow you to evaluate when you get files from pre-supported from a Patreon or a Kickstarter. This will let you take a quick look at the model. Like I look at a lot of the pre-supported files I get from other Patreons and Kickstarters, and I take a quick look and I go, oh man, that one's too thin, that one's too thin, that one's slightly in the wrong place, you know, that needs an extra support, that needs a helper. So we're going to talk about all that stuff so you can just get more consistent, better results. So without further ado, let's jump into Chitterbox and start talking about it. So we're looking at an ogre here that I gave two swords to in 3D Builder. Uh, it was Modulo, but I attached them. So now let's look at, rotate the model, you look around, break the model down into different models. So we've got the right arm is a model on its own. And the bottom of the sword handle, I consider that to be its own little model in a sense. Same thing with the left arm. The left arm is totally detached from the body. And the bottom of the left sword is as well. And of course, we've got the left leg and the right leg. And then the loin claw also has its own separate model, the way I look at this. The first thing we're going to do is, under the feet, when I'm anchoring a model, and these supports are going to get pulled on with every single layer, the model is going to try to pull off these bottom supports and you will not see them these feet are going to go into a base so i don't care what kind of damage i do to the feet so first let me orient it and then what i'm going to do is at the lowest points of the model on the feet right because yeah, i have to support each leg but each leg is then supporting the whole model i'm going to use pretty thick heavy supports anywhere from 60 to 80 depending on the size and by 60 i mean 0.60 to 0 0.80 you might be you might hear me refer to them as, as whole numbers just to make it quicker. So I'm going to go uh, the 0.6 or the 0.8 underneath, and that's going to support each leg. And then when those legs join together up higher, it's going to be supporting the entire model. So 
again, I'm under the foot. You're not going to see it. I'm going with 60s here because I'm going to put a few of them. So there are a couple of uh, islands created down here. Same thing now on this right foot. I'm going to make sure I hit all those big points. You know, because again, there's a big heavy model, so I'm safe putting a bunch down here. And then once I've got all the main points anchored, right, now I can go back in and use something smaller like a medium just to make sure I don't do, you know, damage that's going to break to the outside of the model. Plus, I want to make the supports easier to remove so I don't need big, thick, heavy ones. Because the amount of material these are supporting is actually very little until it joins up with the main foot. So think of these each as a tiny little, each toe is a tiny little model, but I don't have to support much material. These toes uh, barely have islands, so it's only supporting a tiny little bit of material. Again, I don't need anything really heavy there. This one doesn't have an island, but I'll put it there just to help anchor the model. So now my model is very securely anchored. Now look at the next part of the model. This loincloth is floating on its own for a good, you know, whatever, 30, 40 layers it looks like, right? Up to here it joins the model. That means I have to place supports adequate to get that part of the model up to the rest of the model. And again, since it's on the underside, and I can hide any damage here quite easily, I'm going to go with a little bit of thicker just to make sure I don't get a flat pancake loincloth, right? So I'm going to go with, uh, in the big flat parts, I can use heavier ones because, again, you won't see that. So, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my heavy for this point because you won't see anything there. And I'm just going to move this, make sure I get the whole island. And at the other low point down here, I, there it's kind of flat so I can stick a heavy without really doing damage. And boom, now, now this is pretty well supported. Now this is a thinner point. I don't want to put a heavier, it might damage it too much. I'm going to put a medium. It only has to support a few layers of material until it gets up to where that heavy is then supporting. And then the, the weight distribution will be split, so it's okay that it's not nearly as heavy. So what I'm going to do is, in order to support that one, I put a, a very small one behind it where you won't see. Now there's two supports supporting that little tip. So instead of using a big heavy one, I can use a medium and a light and get the same amount of support as using a heavy, basically. So now this loincloth is basically supported. I would probably go back in with some lights and hit some areas that don't need supports, just what I call helper supports, just to make sure the shape stays, nothing pulls, nothing warps. So again, here we're back out of sight, so I can, I can go a little bit ham with adding light supports now just to make sure everything prints out in the perfect shape without warping. You know, just give a lot of help to these supports. Also, as this joins the model, this now will also be helping to anchor the model. So once the two legs and the loincloth all join up, all those supports are now uh, getting pulled every single time the build plate lifts back off the FEP or the next layer of the model lifts off the FEP. So I want to make sure that's all really well supported. So again, the bottoms here, they're going to be hidden. I can go back to using the heavy. There's no need to try to go as light as possible. I might be able to tweak it, use a medium. But what's the point? You're not going to see any damage down here ever. And if you want to fix an area like this, one of the little two swipes of sandpaper or your X-Acto knife, you'll never know the support was there anyway. So now we've got this back part of the loincloth, which is its own separate model as well. Think, Look at the material it's holding up. Now I can go ham again with these light supports, which aren't really going to leave any damage. But they're going to help make sure that these heavy supports do their job, that when the, when the pull, when the suction forces pull, now those suction forces are going to be very evenly distributed among a bunch of different supports. Now you've got a loincloth that's absolutely going to print out perfectly. So, and don't be afraid to use extremely light, as I call them, helper supports to make sure your model stays uh, very faithful to what the artist sculpted. Now you see again where you can't see them. I'm giving extra support to the inside of that loincloth that you'll never see. Again, just extra st stability and extra guarantee my print won't fail and that I won't have the pancake loincloth. So now, let's talk about something like this. That's its own model. Each of those islands, consider them their own model. How much do you need to support them before they join the model is the question. So once it gets over a few layers, I can use a light, but I need to use a, a light that's a little thicker, like 0 0.30 or 0.25, anything less than that those little things will probably pull off and print very flat-ish. Now, they're small, so you might not notice that much, but we're trying to get the best print we can. So, again, they are, they're not holding an insignificant amount of material, so I can't go with, uh, you know, 0.10 or something like that. 
where you can use a 0.10 when it's only a few pixels being held and then joins the model almost immediately. There you can use a 0.10. Sometimes I use, I even use, I'm sorry, 0.01. Um, sometimes I use, I even use uh, smaller than that. You know, I, uh, instead of a 0.1, sorry. Most of the times I go down to 0.1, but sometimes I go down to 0.05 for my uh, upper diameter when it's really only a few pixels that I want to support, like a tiny, tiny little island that's joining the model. And then you can go as thin as you want, basically. So here you see the arm doesn't join till up at that pectoral muscle all the way up there. So this whole arm that I'm circling, that is one model. We have to support that model. Forget all the other supports we placed. They are now irrelevant. We have to support this model so it prints properly. So that means we're going to need to go back again to really make it safe. And again, because you won't see it, and there's a textured bottom, I can go back to a heavy, right? And on the lowest points, I can just stick a heavy. That, that, that heavy I just put there, it's about the width of the bottom of that circular thing. So you're not going to see damage there, right? And these are also underside the model. You wouldn't even notice unless you picked it up and flipped it over. So the amount of repair work or fixing you'd have to do is very little. Now here, you're not supporting nearly as much material. It only has to support that part of the horn till it uh, spike, till it joins back to the model. So what I'm going to do is, I don't need that heavy. I'm going to go a little smaller now. And I have to put two of them because there's two islands. So what I'm going to do is, I'm then going to, instead of using a heavy just to make sure, I'm going to put a few really, really light ones at 0.20 just to make sure that that prints nicely, doesn't flatten out. Um, those will use little, leave little to no damage, and again, very, very easily fixed on that underside. If you want an absolutely perfect model for a painting competition, those supports I just added, you'll barely be able to tell. So you can really fix it easily. Now here, you've got a spot where it's supporting very little material on the left. So I'm going to use a thin one, because I only need to support just a couple layers before it joins the model. So, and there's another spot right next to it that also is a tiny little island. But again, that's not really supporting much of the model, so I don't need a big support there. And now, once, just because there's no island doesn't mean you don't need a support. It's always good to have some very thin helper support just to make sure you get the right shape on the models. Because there's still gravity, there are still pure forces, really thin layers like that, even if they're not islands, can deform. So something like this, this edge joins the model pretty quickly, so that also I can use really, really small ones. So let's do an example. There, I can use a point two because those things are not really, they're islands, but they're not supporting much material. The material is going to be supported by the big ones underneath those, which are really anchoring this model, this arm, which is its own model. So once I have everything clearly anchored, you then look at each area and see how much material is printing. Now, because this is the main anchor for the arm, I'm adding two little helpers there and another one just to make sure that this bottom, which is holding up the whole arm effectively, is really secure. That way I can use lighter supports on other parts higher up on the hand where you, know, where you might see damage and I really want to minimize the appearance of any damage. So in here, you see that I'm sticking uh, mostly lighter supports This one's holding a little more material, so I'm making it a tiny little bit thicker. I'm going to drag it out, change the angle a little bit, and you won't really see that one when I clip it off. So this should start to give you an idea of viewing each part of the model as a separate model. So these, these now that I'm looking at are holding up very little material, so I can stay very light, make sure I'm causing very little damage, but that everything here is properly supported. Here, these need a ton of islands. So you want a couple of heavier ones interspersed with the light ones there just to make sure that the ones holding up the most material are properly anchored. So this looks thick enough. Those are thick enough, I'm gonna actually keep those heavies. Here I'm gonna go mediums. Again, you won't see this damage, it's on the underside, but damage on textured stuff like this, not much anyway. So here, what I'm making sure here, the way I've supported this, you will definitely not in any way, shape, or form, get a pancake arm. Impossible. I and mean, if your settings are remotely correct, this can't pancake on you. Now I can go to lighter supports because I've anchored that arm very securely, and now I can just look piece by piece. As long as none of these are supporting a huge ton of material that's going to go up before joining another part of the model, I can now use lighter supports and just hit all these islands 
make sure they're all supported. And this one, uh, that one's starting to hold a decent amount of material before it joins. I might want to use something a little thicker there, or I would use more than one support to make sure that's adequately supported and doesn't get me a little flat part. That won't ruin the model, but if you look closely, you'd see that might, the way some people support it, that little section would print flat, hard to notice, but better to have it print out perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that one relatively thin, still go up a little bit to 0.3, and then it's a good idea when you do that to uh, add a helper to the sides if you can. Now, where things, like I said, where things join on the model, like this, and you're supporting only, you see it's only a few pixels before it joins the whole model, there you can go really light. There's no need to put anything thick there because there's no point to it. It's only supporting, you know, two or three layers before it joins the model. So if I want to go down to point one like this, that's perfectly acceptable. And and you just want to make sure that, that, that the island starts off supported so it's not sticking anywhere funky like your FEP or cured in the vat. So as long as you hit the island, even that support pulls off after a few layers, you're going to be fine. Because that, that's going to join up the model so quickly that you're not at risk of it actually not, not being there, not being attached to the model. Right? So you, this we're zoomed in on a tiny, tiny little area. And you can see just a couple little supports here. It's going to make that... See, I just want to show you how small the area is, actually. So there's not much printing there that needs to be supported. So these, sm these small ones are fine. Uh, I see it's a little bigger than I thought, so I'm going to go back to point two, which is still tiny. And as you build the model up, see, like something like this, it joins the model one layer later. It actually has a connection. So I don't, all I need is the barest support there to make sure those few pixels just don't print onto my FEP. So I can make this a point one, no problem. If this pulls off the model later due to peel forces, it's going to be fine. This, port, this part that it's supporting will already have been attached to the model by the time it happens, so I'm not worried about it at all. So there I can go very, very light. So if you look at every single support you need to place, every single island, the start of an island, that's its own separate model. And all you need to do is place the appropriate support to get that mini model to the next part of the model where it can share support, strength, and stability. So again, showing you here this left arm, I'm sorry, his right arm now on the left of our screen, it's a separate model, and then there's tons of little separate models on that separate model, right? So it's a really good way to think, just look at a model, section it off, imagine it as several different models just sharing the same build plate. Like the chin, okay, so the chin has one, two, three, four, five, out. Look, look, it's a pretty big amount before it joins the model. So I have to support this as if it's, now, this chin is now its own model, and it's not a small area that's unsupported to the rest of the model, which means I have to actually put a decently significant support under that chin in order for it to not pancake. So I'm going with a heavy under here because it, it, actually, it actually needs it to stay anchored. But that's not going to be enough because the back half of that could easily pull off. So again, I'm putting another heavy back there. I can shrink it a little bit. But it needs a significant support back there. Now these two supports anchor that whole chin going up. So now we're in pretty good shape. Now I'm not worried that that chin's going to pancake. And again, that, that damage, if any, if you don't clip it off and sand it carefully, that damage is not going to be in sight. When this model stands on the table, you won't see those areas really. And, and it's very easy to, instead of ripping them off like I normally do, if you just clip those supports off and then just give it a teeniest tiny light sanding with your finest sandpaper or very very thin cut with the exacto knife you will never know supports were there so that's what we're trying to achieve with these supports is to make sure that at the end of the day the model looks as clean as possible and we do want to minimize the repair work that you have to do uh, so now here I'm dragging it over I'm gonna go with, show you what you can do to go with uh, smaller supports and then more than one if your support get tips get too close though remember they will just bond and effectively be one support so you have to be mindful that you have a little bit of distance there but you know this whole thing floating out there you, know, you, ha you have to support it properly otherwise it's going to pancake and ruin your model so that's about it it's just the concept is remember keep splitting your model up look build an island up from the bottom and see where it connects to the model how much material is going on to that support and that's how you gauge how thick, how strong your support needs to be to hold up that little mini model that it's holding up.
So I hope this really helps you guys, plays better support. Hope it helps you fix models you get when you get pre-supported Patreon models. Hope it results in just better prints for you, cleaner prints for you. Uh, my whole aim with this channel is to get you printing better and more reliable. Like, by the way, these are, these are sticking out, so we need to support those. Go with the angle that it's at, and then uh, add some little support helpers too. Anyway, hope this helps you. Please like, please subscribe, uh, please check out my other videos. Thanks, and happy 3D printing, everyone.